Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about world building for role players. So we've talked a lot on this channel about various aspects of role play, but one thing that we haven't really touched on is world building. So today we're going to go through my sort of like 101 world building tips when it comes to using worlds for role play. Now, some of these tips are going to be more geared towards people running groups, but a lot of the stuff you will need if you're running groups or if you're creating worlds for your one on one role plays either way. So first, we're going to sort of jump ahead to the end and talk about some things that you need to know in regard to world building that's important for role play specifically. And then what we're going to do is backtrack and talk about how to get started world building. So what is kind of the first one of those things that you really need to know when it comes to world building for role play? So once you have actually built that world and you're ready to start advertising your group or you're ready to start posting that first thread for your one-on-one, -on -one, then there's something that you need to do in that moment. And that is exercise from yourself that feeling of ownership over the world. Just like when a child becomes a teenager, when you're ready to release that world either to your partner or your potential players for your role play group, you have to, within yourself, not feel ownership over that world. If you do, that role play is doomed to fail. Why? Because for others to be interested in your world, they need to feel like they can come in and put their own stamp on it. They're going to want to add in their own tweaks and additions. And if you feel that sense of ownership over that world, you're not going to have the proper reaction to their tweaks and additions. So we need to cut that feeling out completely. If you can't remove this feeling, you need to seriously ask yourself, did I build this world for role play or did I build it for me? If you built it for yourself, then maybe that world is better suited for writing a novel instead of building a role play group. So that really, that is my number one tip when it comes to world building for role play. If you can do that, everything else in regard to world building is a cakewalk. Okay, so what else do you need to think about in regard to world building for role play? Now this is a tip that really has a lot more to do with people running groups, but it's still important to think about. Once you've built your world, you need to look at it from the perspective of a min-maxer. So what is a min-maxer? A min-maxer is someone that looks at a role play and says, how can I make the strongest, most extra, coolest character? And you'll find min-maxers all over the role play world. If you're running something with magic or powers, the type of min-maxer that you'll attract is one that's trying to make the most powerful character. If you're running a role play focused on romance, then you're going to attract the type of min maxer that thinks it's their goal for their character to have the most possible partners. Even if you're running a slice of life role play, you still will attract min maxers. Maybe what they'll do is try to have their character have the most tragic backstory ever. The point is, min maxers are everywhere. So once you've built your world, Look at your role play and think about all of the decisions someone has to make to bring their character into your role play. And think about it from the perspective of a min maxer. So they're going to look at it and they're going to say, how can I make the most extra whatever character? So you need to do that to your role play. Then what you're going to do is once you know how a min maxer might exploit your system is think, is there anything that I can do to sort of gimp that without hurting the players that aren't min maxers? You can't stop min-maxing completely, but what you can do is make tweaks to your roleplay system so that min-maxing isn't explicitly encouraged. For example, if you're running a supernatural roleplay, you probably have a list of species people can pick from. So what you'll need to do is look at all of your species and ask yourself, if I was a min-maxer, how would I make the strongest possible character? And whatever species that is, you'll need to see if there's ways that you can tweak it, especially if that strongest possible character is something that's game-breaking. Now, if you can't mitigate this without removing things that would be really fun for non-min-maxers, instead of trying to mitigate it, what I would recommend is to just keep an eye out for it. Think about it, consider it when you see applications that come in that might be doing that min-maxing. 
So at this point, we've talked about the main things that you really need to know about world building when it comes to doing it for role play. So at this point, you know what you're getting into, you kind of know what your goals are in regard to world building. But what if you've never done this before? If that's the case, how do you start? If you've looked at any world building methodology, what you'll notice is generally two methods, and that is top down and bottom up. What does this mean? Top down world building means that you take on the role of the god of your universe, and you design the big things first. So those are going to be things like the cosmology of the world, the physics of the world. If you have gods, maybe you design a pantheon of gods and you work down from there. So from there, maybe you build like the topography of the world. Maybe you build like certain nations and political systems and you keep going all the way down until you're designing individual towns or households. Bottom up world building, by contrast, starts with the small things. So to do this for role play, you would think about, okay, what's the starting town that I need people in? And you design that town first, and then you slowly add more things as they become relevant to the plot or to what the characters are doing in your world. And these methods exist on a spectrum. You're rarely gonna find pure bottom up or top down world building designers. You're generally gonna use a mix of these types of world building depending on what your needs are. Okay. So what else do you need? We talked about at the beginning of this video about exercising that feeling of ownership. So if you don't have that feeling of ownership, how do you accurately assess if you should say yes or no when someone asks to add something to your world? Because they see you as the authority, so they will ask. And even if they don't ask, how do you know when to step in if two different players are writing contradictory things about the world that can't both be true? Because you're going to have to handle that as the owner of the world. We handle this with axioms. An axiom is a statement or proposition which is regarded as being established, accepted, or self-evidently true. So ask yourself, what is true about your world? For example, if you're building a fantasy world, Think about magic. Magic is science is an axiom used in Full Metal Alchemist. In that show, magic is a system that you can study. It's totally knowable. You can unlock all of its secrets. Magic is mysterious is an axiom in Game of Thrones. In that particular world, magic is something that we can't predict. And even the things that we think we know about it are often false. And you can have axioms about anything. Politics, gods, the wilderness. So for example, with the wilderness, think about in your world, is the wilderness safe? In our world, the wilderness is mostly safe. You can travel easily, but maybe in your world, the wilderness is dangerous and it's populated by monsters and other crazy creatures that make travel difficult. What about knowledge? In our world, knowledge is abundant, but maybe in your world, knowledge is rare. If you've not done this before, it can be useful to actually write down all of these axioms. And then what you can do is when someone asks, hey, I want to add such and such to the world, or you need to settle, you know, a dispute between two things where we've got two contradictory things going on, you can reference your axioms. And then you can decide, okay, if this violates one of those axioms, then the answer is no, we can't have this in the world. If it doesn't violate one of those axioms, though, go ahead and let your player add it. Making decisions in this way is going to help you keep your world on track the way that you want it to without that feeling of ownership, because that feeling of ownership is going to make you make decisions based on personal wants and desires, not about the overall goals of the world that keep the role play running. Because remember, at the end of the day, we want a role play where people do feel free to add stuff to the world without feeling alienated or like they're doing it wrong. So there is so much still to say when it comes to world building. It is a huge topic. So let me know down below what other world building stuff you're interested in me covering. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.